All right, we are now live. Hello, everybody. We are at the top of the hour. Welcome. You are at the Carolinas Association of Collegiate and Registrar's Admissions Officers Virtual College Fair, powered by StriveScan. Welcome. My name is Sabelle Rasim. I will be your facilitator for this evening's session. Again, thank you all so much for being here. As we all know, time flies when you're having a good time. So we're going to get started. We have about 45 minutes on the clock with some absolutely amazing institutions here to talk to you a little bit about themselves. Um, but before they do, just a couple things. We encourage questions. The way you will ask those questions will be in that Q&A button in your Zoom toolbar. You'll go ahead and use that Q&A button to type in your questions to the presenters at any point in time. I stress at any point in time. You do not have to wait until the end, and I highly encourage you do not wait until the end. Um, the presenters can be uh, answering your questions at any point in time during the presentation. Um, also, please put the institution's name within the question so we all know who the question goes to. The panelists cannot see or hear you. You're muted and your video is turned off. So again, it's super important that you ask those questions in the Q&A. And fun fact, um, the panelists and presenters may be putting some information in the chat. So go ahead and check out um, if you do see notifications in the chat. Now, in regards to signing up for more sessions, uh, please disregard that. We do not have any more uh, sessions happening for the next time slot, but you're more than, more than welcome to go to the strivescan.com website to check out other sessions in the near future. Last but not least, a recording will be available of all sessions. All of them are being recorded. So if you want to relive the fun or maybe mom wants to check out these schools or you have a friend that missed out on tonight, they can check out that recording at strivescan.com backslash Carolinas within the next few business days. With that said, I would love to get started. Our first institution up for this evening is Life University. Hey, good evening. My name is Hurley Reed, and I'm the undergraduate admissions counselor at Life University in Marietta, Georgia. So I'm going to actually play a video for you that will sum up the institution as well. But just right before I get started, I definitely wanted to uh, just give you a little bit of information about Life University. We are a four-year health science institution that focuses on the vitalistic philosophy. And so that means that the body itself, natural healing itself through the proper nutrition, diet, rest, and exercise. So find that subluxation um, as far as within the body, that interference. And so uh, we have no out-of-state tuition, no out-of-state fees. We do have housing, sports, and different things like that available as far as for students. So I'm going to show you this quick video. And then I will also put at the end of the video um, in the chat box and fee waiver code. So anyone who's interested and in, um, applying, then you can apply for free. And please feel free to ask me any questions that you may have. Thank you.
All right. And I will put a few river code in the very end. And if you guys have any questions, I'll put my contact information. There's Okay, I'm gonna great day. All right, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Life University, go ahead and put, please put it in the Q&A. Next up we have Lander University. Hey everyone, my name is Elizabeth Moore. I'm a freshman admissions counselor at Lander University in Greenwood, South Carolina. Um, I'm gonna share my screen with you guys. I just have a little short presentation for you with some Lander information. If any of you guys have never heard of Lander before. Um, so I'll go ahead and get started with that. So Lander University, we're actually the second smallest public university located in South Carolina. We have right around 3,500 total students. We're actually at our largest enrollment in Lander history. We also represent students from 23 states and 28 countries. So you will get to meet students from all over the United States and all over the world. We also have a little bit of a larger gender gap on campus as well. We're actually 68% female and 32% male. And we just attribute that large gap to nursing and education being our two largest and our most popular majors that we offer at Lander. But at Lander, we do have over 80 different areas of study, including all of our majors, minors, and pre-professional studies. If any of you guys are interested in any type of pre-medicine program, pre-dentistry, pre-optometry, pre-physician assistant, pre-PA, pre OT. We also have a 17 to 1 student to faculty ratio on campus with an average class size of around 22 students pre-COVID. Right now with COVID going on, our average class size is around 15 to 16 students. So pretty comfortable class sizes as well. But at Lander, we also do have seven different colleges and schools. So um, you'll see our largest majors over to, I guess, your right of the screen, but our largest majors that we offer on campus are going to be nursing, education, business, biology, psychology, and exercise science. We also added six new majors this year. We added an interactive media and graphic design major. We added a human services major. We also added three more majors to our College of Business. We added IT management, sports management, and hospitality management. And then we also added another major to our School of Nursing, which is gonna be health promotions and wellness. So a lot of different majors for you guys to choose from. Um, for housing and residence life, all first time freshmen are required to live on campus their freshman year, sophomore through senior year, you can move off campus if you so choose. We do have five freshman residence halls for you guys to choose from. So there is a lot, they all range from a two person suite, small apartment style or suite mate style. And then parking passes, all first time freshmen are allowed to have cars with them on campus. So you just have to pay for a parking pass. And then athletics here on campus. So we're NCAA division two. We are a part of the Peach Belt Conference. So we compete against other small schools in South Carolina, such as USC Aiken and Francis Marion, and then other schools in North Carolina, Georgia and Florida. All athletic events are free for Lander students to attend. So you never have to pay anything. And then our Jeff May complex is where all of our outdoor athletics, athletic sporting facilities are housed. And that's about a block from campus. We also added four new sports teams last year and this year, well combined. So we added a men and women's lacrosse team. We also added a men's wrestling team and an acrobatics and tumbling team. How to apply to Lander when it comes time for you guys to apply to Lander. Our application is free all the time. We're also rolling admissions at Lander, which means that we are constantly making decisions weekly as long as we have the information needed to make a decision. So what we need is your submitted application. Um, if any of you guys are fall 2021 students, we are test optional for this year. We're also gonna be test optional for the fall of 2022 as well. So we only need your transcripts to make an admissions decision. However, if you would like to be a recipient of any of our freshman academic scholarships, you do have to submit your SAT or your ACT test score to be eligible for those scholarships. Then financial aid, the VASFA opens up every single year on October 1st, so make sure you guys go ahead and do that when it becomes available. It says our deadline is December 1st, that is just contingent on however fast you want to get back your packets. That is Lander's FAFSA code, so whenever you go to add a school, you just write in Lander's FAFSA code and it automatically attaches all of your information um, or all of our information for you guys, so that way we can create you a financial aid packet. And you would apply online at FAFSA.gov. 
for my in-state students of South Carolina. So we accept all the state of South Carolina awards. We accept Hope Life Palmetto Fellows, Teaching Fellows, Need-Based Grant, and Teacher Loan. We also have that other freshman academic scholarship that I mentioned to you guys. It ranges from $1,000 to $6,000. And you have to submit a application, your transcripts, and test scores. And then we also have a military and family scholarship for students who are active military or veteran or a dependent of an active military or veteran member. And then events you guys can come to. So we will have more open house events next year, along with Bearcat for a Day events. Um, right now, the only upcoming events that we have that would be available to you guys are daily tours, which occur Monday through Friday at 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. But if you guys have any more questions or like my contact information, I will put it down in the chat for you guys. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. If you have any questions for Lander University, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Winthrop University. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. Uh, my name is Allison Blackwilder, um, and I am an undergraduate admissions counselor at Winthrop University. And so I'm going to take the next several minutes to just share with you all um, who we are and what we have what we have to offer. So let's get it kicked off. All right, let me go ahead and make this a little bigger. All right. Let's go. All right. Welcome to Winthrop University. Winthrop is a four year public uh, university in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Um, I think a lot of students choose Winthrop because we have we have such a community oriented um, energy and atmosphere. We have been consistently ranked in the top 10 public universities in the South. We got our highest ranking last year at number six. So something we're very proud of. We're only one of 37 universities in the entire country with all five of our arts programs nationally accredited. That's our design, dance, theater, music, and fine arts. All five are accredited, one of only 37 universities in the entire country. Um, and also we have a 91% student placement rate. So of course you don't just go to college and then it ends there. You're thinking about your future too. Within three to six months after graduation at Winthrop, 91% of our students um, are either in a graduate program in their field or in a job within their field, with a few of our programs being right at 100%. That includes our education programs and a couple of our um, visual performing arts programs as well. And we do have the most diverse student population of all South Carolina colleges. So we do represent the population of South Carolina um, really well at our school and something that I think that just keeps uh, Winthrop really organically, organically growing. All right. We are located in Rock Hill, South Carolina, about 30 minutes south of Charlotte, which is the largest city in the Carolinas. Um, so we have a bit of a be best of both worlds feel in Rock Hill, where we are growing and developing. You'll still find that sort of smaller town um, vibe. It's really, it's really nice. It's really comforting. Um, but those professional, social, uh, and and um, professional opportunities in a bigger city are right there for you and they're very accessible. But right here in Rock Hill, like I said, we're growing a lot. Uh, we have a lot of out outdoors activities that you can be a part of in our Riverwalk district. The Carolina Panthers are actually moving their training facility to Rock Hill, which is really exciting for our up and coming students because it's gonna offer a lot of jobs and internships. And we just have a lot of uh, a lot of things being developed um, in our downtown area and right around campus, which is really exciting. A lot of new shops and restaurants, um, a lot of social opportunities for our students, but also professional opportunities coming. Um, and we do have a new sport and rec center, new exercise science facility. So we are, you know, the fifth largest town in South Carolina, but we are growing and it's really exciting. We have about 6,000 eagles in our nest uh, with a little under 5,000 of those being undergraduate students. If you're a first year student coming in, you'll be one of about a thousand or so. So I think it's definitely a good size where you feel like you're gonna meet a lot of new people, um, but definitely small enough to where you are not just a number here at Winthrop. And although we are a little bit on the smaller side, kind of the lower end of a medium sized school, we are still very well represented throughout uh, throughout the country and throughout the world. 
And of course, we have so many academic opportunities. We definitely want students and value you know, the, those chances and opportunities um, for, for you to, to cultivate your leadership skills and everything like that. So we do have an honors program that you can be a part of. You can definitely let me know if you have any questions about um, how to apply for honors and the perks of that. We have a lot of study abroad options you know, from two weeks to an entire semester to an entire year. And on those longer programs, whether you are out of state or in South Carolina, you do pay in-state tuition when you are on, on those trips. Um, and of course, we have undergraduate research. And the great thing about undergraduate research here is that for one, it's not just for STEM majors. We actually had a sport management group that was supposed to go to the Tokyo Olympics last year, but of course they couldn't. Um, and they were funded to do that. So it's for every major you can think of all 43 that we have. Um, but the great thing about Winthrop is that we are small enough to where you as an undergraduate student will get to lead your own research. Um, so you really get to, to lead your own research and have a faculty mentor supporting you in that. And like I said, kind of uh, lending to our size, we do have an average class size of about 21, but I guarantee if you talk to most of our current students, they're gonna tell you that most of their classes are even smaller than that. So if that's something you're looking for, you will absolutely find it here at Winthrop. We have a lot to do in the community. I think every single student is involved in something on campus. We have over 160 student organizations um, and uh, Greek orgs, a ton of intramural sports. And although we're a little smaller, we are a part of the Division I. We're part of the Big South Conference. So all of our games and events are so really hype and really fun um, for our students. There are a couple of ways uh, to become a Winthrop Eagle. This route is applying with test scores and we are gonna be test optional um, for the foreseeable future. So for incoming freshmen for the next few years, you will have a test optional route, but this first route is with test scores. Those top three things you see here are required. Um, so the high school transcript, those scores and that completed online, online application, we are on the Common App as well. And then our test optional pathway, is of course essentially the same, but you will not be applying with those test scores. Instead, we will require you to uh, submit a short answer essay as a writing sample. All right. Money, scholarship opportunities. Yes, so at Winthrop, uh, we have a ton of ways for you to be able to earn some money. And for any out-of-state students, we absolutely have those out-of-state waivers as well. So please let me know if you have any questions about any of our scholarship opportunities. And please, please, please connect with us on all of our social media if you feel the need to do so. I think our admissions on Instagram is our best one to get some updates. And I will drop my contact here in the chat as well. Thanks so much, guys. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Winthrop University, please put it in the Q&A. Next up, we have Oglethorpe University. Hi, guys, and welcome. So quick introduction. My name is Ethan Hawkland, and I am a senior admission counselor here at Oglethorpe University, and I am here to share with you guys um, a couple of things about Oglethorpe, this quick presentation. Um, so we will go ahead and get started here. Um, so in general, Oglethorpe is a small school located in the city of Atlanta. When I say small, we have just under 1,500 students. Average class sizes are 17 and nothing is bigger than 25. So you're getting that small school experience um, while also being located in the city of Atlanta. Atlanta has a lot of opportunity for students to be connected to, you know, different um, internships, professional developments, and networking is such a big part of your um, you know, college experience. So it leads for a connected living and hands-on learning experience for our students. Um, at Oglethorpe, we have 60 different academic programs for students to choose from. Most popular the ones include business, biology, um, communications, theater, and physics slash engineering. Um, we've had two recent developments in those fields, including the Cousin Center for Science and Innovation. This is our brand new science facility on campus where students are going to utilize a bunch of research opportunities, um, as well as new developments in our STEM programs. It also doubles as our 24 hour study space on campus. So a lot of collaborative learning spaces, study spaces for students to utilize as well. We've also had a recent development in our business department with the Hammock School of Business. This is our first standalone school here at Oglethorpe, so we're really proud and looking forward to more developments going on like our certificate in business analytics. 
Last but not least is our individually planned major, which is sort of a craft your own major sort of deal. So um, an example I always like to use is like we had a student who recently wanted to major in linguistics. That's not currently an academic program offered at Oglethorpe. So they use the indiv individually planned major to craft their own major path um, to make sure they get the skills needed for their career. Now at Oglethorpe, we have 60 different clubs and organizations to, uh, to participate in. We have nine Greek sororities and fraternities and 16 athletic teams on campus. Oglethorpe is an NCAA Division III um, school. We are in the SAA conference, so there's plenty of ways for you to be involved in that and Greek life as well. Now at Oglethorpe, we have eight on-campus residence halls for students to choose from. Um, being the majority of the students here I'm speaking to are probably out of state. Um, you will be required to live on campus your first three years. However, after your first year, if you decide you don't want to live in residence hall, you have the option to live at Gables Brookhaven, which is an apartment complex we partnered with, um, built right on our property, and it doubles as a classroom space for a lot of our classes as well. Last but not least, you have the entire city of Atlanta for you to explore. We are not too far away from the nearest Marta station, which is our public transit here in Atlanta. Um, so definitely take advantage of that as well. Now, it's a little difficult for me to tell you your student experience is going to be like an Oglethorpe. So we thought it'd be best to turn to our students and ask them to summarize Oglethorpe in one word. And what would that be? So as you can see, a lot of our students have been able to find a place that they've been able to call home, um, a very inclusive and diverse place. Oglethorpe is so diverse, you know, over 50% of our students identify as students of color. We have a lot of different students from different socioeconomic backgrounds. Um, so even though we're such a small school, it's an easy place to really feel such a worldly connection to your students, your staff, and your faculty. Now, when we talk about financial aid at Oglethorpe, we talk about it in three different categories, institutional aid, state aid, and federal aid. Starting with institutional aid, students can qualify for merit-based scholarships from $18,000 to $23,000, um, just based on your academic performance. Second is the OU grant, which is a grant that we provide to students for completing the FAFSA on a yearly basis. Based on the information, you could qualify for need-based funding available to you, whether it's institutional or federal aid. We'll talk about federal aid in just a moment. Last on the institutional list is our music and IB scholarships. If you're graduating with a school um, with an IB diploma program and you get the IB diploma, you'll be awarded that at Oglethorpe. Um, and secondly, if you want to uh, participate in a vocal or instrumental ensemble, you have the uh, opportunity to audition for one of those scholarships as well. Second is state aid. So since you guys are from South and North Carolina, we do have an out-of-state hope equivalent, which is the Georgia um, sort of state aid that we offer. We will award you $3,500 for that as well. And last but not least is our federal aid, which includes Pell Grants, which are need-based funded grants up to $6,100. Additionally, we also have Stafford loans, which is the federal Stafford loans you could qualify for up to $5,500. But the biggest scholarship we like to talk about at Oglethorpe is our Flagship 50 program. The Flagship 50 states that if a student meets our criteria, we will guarantee that they'll pay no more tuition than they would at the University of South Carolina or the University of North Carolina, whatever the flagship institution is for your state. So in order to qualify, you must have a 3.8 GPA on a 4.0 scale or a 30 plus ACT or a 1400 SAT. If you meet that criteria, we'll make sure you pay no more than you would at your flagship institution. So you're getting a private school education at a public school price. Um, so it's fixed renewable for all four years. Any state, federal, or outside scholarships is applied to the remaining balance. So for the admission process, you can apply one of two ways, either through the university application or the Common App. Only thing required for admission is your transcripts or your uh, and your essay. So those are the only two things that we need. Optional criteria include our test scores, interviews, video submissions, and recommendations. We have rolling admission to Oglethorpe, so there is no deadline on our application, but the only deadline to keep in mind is our early action one, which is November 1st for those full tuition awards. Um, so other than that, that's pretty much it. Here's some contact information for us. I'll make sure to follow up in the chat with that as well, uh, but please feel free to ask me any questions you may have in the Q&A. Other than that, I will pass it off. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for Oglethorpe University, please put it in the Q&A. Last but certainly not least, we have the University of Alabama. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Chelsea Marsh. I am the regional recruiter for Alabama. I'm actually located in South Carolina. So if you're a student in South Carolina, we have probably spoken before. 
If you are located in North Carolina, we do have another recruiter. Her name is Rachel Hopewell, and I will leave both of our contact info um, at the end of this presentation so you can get in touch with us. So most of you have probably heard of University of Alabama, but in case you haven't, we are located in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. Tuscaloosa is very much so a college town, but it's a really big college town. So there's everything you could ever want and need as far as shops and restaurants, things to do. But everyone that is in Tuscaloosa is kind of there for the university. So it definitely has that tight knit, small town community type of atmosphere. As far as the school, we are very large. We've got about 38,000 students. About 200 of those students every year come from North and South Carolina, but you're gonna meet students from all over the country if you choose to come to Alabama. We have students from Alaska, Hawaii, Florida, New York, California, you name it, we probably have someone from there. We actually have more students from out of state than we do in state, which is pretty rare for a large public institution like we are. You'll also never be bored on campus. There's plenty of things to do. We have almost 600 different clubs and organizations. We've got some religious affiliated organizations, community service-based organizations. We also have the largest Greek organization in the country. So if you're interested in fraternity or sorority life, Alabama might be a great place for you. Um, you'll also never go hungry on campus. We've got lots of different dining halls for you to choose from two different Chick-fil-A's, a few different Starbucks, and pretty much everything in between. Same thing goes for majors. We've got a little bit of everything as far as majors go. Our most popular colleges are the Colleges of Arts and Sciences, the College of Engineering, and the College of Business. But you can see here we also have communication studies, education, nursing. We also have all of those pre-professional programs if you're interested in pre-med, pre-law, pre-physical therapy. We've got all of those great options for you. We also don't make you declare your major until the end of your sophomore year. So we give you a lot of time to figure out what you like, what you don't like, and just kind of explore around. I don't have stats on our 2020 freshman class, but this will kind of give you a breakdown. This is our 2019 freshman class. You can see here the average GPA and test scores. Now for this uh, seniors this year, we did go test optional. So the test scores might not necessarily be um, reflective of our 2020 freshman class. And if you are a junior this year, we are still trying to evaluate if we are going to be test optional, optional for this coming year. Um, my vote would be yes, I'm hoping that is what we're going with, but we just have not made a final decision on that. It certainly couldn't hurt to go ahead and get registered for an SAT or ACT if you have the opportunity to do so, but we will stay in communication with you on what our final decision for that is. We have some really generous scholarships at the University of Alabama for our out-of-state students. You can see here, um, these are our merit-based scholarships. So we have two different types of scholarship at the university. One is based strictly on your test scores and GPA. So if you do have test scores, you'll be considered for these scholarships. You can see they range anywhere from $6,000 to $28,000 per year, which is very helpful if you are going to be an out-of-state student. If you do not have uh, test scores, or maybe your test scores are just not up to par with the type of student you are in the classroom, we do offer these competitive academic merit scholarships where we're not going to look at test scores. We're going to look at your GPA, the rigor of your courses, your honors, awards, achievements, involvement, all of those different types of things. And do know that these numbers here are based on or are for our current seniors. If you're a junior, this is a great guideline, but just know it is subject to change from year to year. Uh, so if you are a junior this year, our application will open usually in mid-July. Again, we'll be in communication with you on an exact date, and we're excited to announce that we will be on the Common application for this year. So you can apply either through the Common app or through Alabama's application. We do not have a preference. And here is the contact information. Again, I'm Chelsea. I am the South Carolina recruiter. And Rachel, who is not on the call tonight, is our recruiter for North Carolina. So feel free to 
snap a photo of that. And I will also drop our contact information in the chat. Thanks so much. And let me know if you have any questions. Roll Tide. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. If you have any questions for University of Alabama, go ahead and put it in that Q&A. I would love if our presenters and panelists could go ahead and join me. I have a question for you all, actually. Um, let me bring this slide up here. All right, if everyone can see my purple slide, I have a question for everybody. Question is, what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll just go in presentation order with Life University going first. Uh, one of the advices that I would give someone going through the college search process is definitely to, uh, you know, besides searching for everything that you want, visit the campus. It's always good to visit the institution and get the feel for it, get the vibe, the energy that you uh, make it feel like this institution could take you to the next level. And, uh, and, you know, see if you can meet with different individual students and also other faculty and staff that's within the department of which you're seeking as a major. And so that would just be one of my advices was definitely to visit the campus and find out ways how you can be involved within that campus too as well. Awesome. Lander University? Yes, yeah, so this is probably going to be repeated several times, um, but one of the big ones is obviously research. Um, see what you're interested in, maybe what size college you're interested in going to, small, medium, large. Also, what you would be interested in being involved in on campus and what that university has to offer, or even if you can start new clubs or organizations at that campus. Um, but also, like Life University said, the campus visit is huge. Um, it's probably the most important part besides obviously being admitted to that specific university you're interested in. For me personally, I was a first generation college student. So the campus visit was what really sold me on the campus that I actually went to and I actually ended up going to Lander. So um, it was a big decision maker for me. So make sure you guys are visiting campus, visit as much as you can. Most campuses um, will give you a school excuse as well if you tour during the week. So please don't stray away from visiting any campus. Thank you. Awesome, thank you. Winthrop University? Yeah, absolutely. Um, definitely uh, second both of those. Um, and also, I would just say, ask questions. No question is too big or too small. So please, that's what we are here for. Um, please ask us questions because you don't, you know, you want to, you want to try to get them all answered um, when you have them as well. You're going to get a lot of information. You're going to get bombarded with information. And you're not expected to know what to do and how to do all of it. Um, so please, please, please just utilize us um, as, as admissions counselors. That's what we're there for. So please ask questions. Awesome. Thank you. Oglethorpe University. Yeah. Uh, so I would say um, when you're going through your college search, um, apply to different types of schools. Um, you don't really know for sure what type of school you want to go to until you set foot on campus or you really go through the whole admission process. So I'd say just keep an open mind when you're going through it. Uh, apply to different schools like small colleges, medium colleges, large colleges, whatever it may be, like private, public, um, because it may be a, a you know very eye opening for you to be there and sort of see, oh, I didn't even know this was something available to me. Um, so I would just say, just keep them in mind, apply to different colleges so you have some choices and uh, feel free to visit all of them uh, to make your final decision. Awesome, thank you. University of Alabama? This piece of advice is easier said than done, but try not to stress. I know it can feel very overwhelming and stressful at times when you're applying to a handful of colleges and trying to juggle all of the different um, dates and deadlines and recommendation letters and all of those types of things for each college you're applying to. But try to remember that this process is supposed to be fun and you're supposed to you know, find a university that's going to fit you as much as you're going to fit them. And, and take the time to enjoy your senior year and try not to get caught up in all of the stress of the process. Great advice, everybody. Thank you so much. I know I learned a thing or two and I hope our attendees did as well. Um, with that said, thank you all so much panelists and presenters for being here and sharing some amazing information. And our attendees, thank you so much for being here and joining us. 
you're already one step ahead, but remember, this is just an appetizer. So you have only hit the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more um, you know, to check out in these institutions. So go ahead and follow up with them and dig a lot deeper. Um, super quick before you leave, after you close this window, a very quick four question survey will appear. Go ahead and give us some feedback, my attendees. We really appreciate it. Um, again, uh, there are no more sessions for this evening, but you can go ahead and check out the strivescan.com website um, to see if there are any other sessions you are interested in in the near future. And then again, if you'd like to relive the fun with us, a recording will be available within the next few business days at strivescan.com backslash Carolinas. All right. With that said, thank you all so, so much. I hope you have a great night. Bye, everybody.